book of wonderful suffering, the transmutation of pain into spiritual growth, written by Joe Phipps, narrated by Cregan, Darkness, the Greatest Teacher, a foreword by Jason Barron. Inside all of us is a certain hunger and a certain need to know the unknown. This is something we're born with that never leaves and drives an unquenchable thirst in those who are aware. Looking through the mirror is not always what it seems. The reflection changes, and so does our universe. We forever and always seek answers to the unknown and what's beyond the veil. This path has connected us and drawn us in. There is a story here within the story, and it's our job as students to figure out the end game, if there so be it one. We are connected by thought and dreams, but is this reality? Many men are figuring out what makes us tick, where darkness stops and light begins. We are studying our ability to recognize our true will to be and become. This is the reason why this path is relevant. This isn't a test where at the end the answer is given. It is opening up to the light and pouring out the darkness to find the temple. It is looking through the mirror and understanding the navigation of the journey, the navigation of the path, the individual's own way. Recognize the union that has always been. We live in a world of opposites and seem almost condemned to this dualist reality. Through the fascinating exploration of horror stories arose a deeper curiosity in us. The monsters and messages of the films always left us rooting for the bad guys. But really, who's to say these monsters are, in fact, the bad guys? Is it society that has imprinted darkness as a substance of malice? Whenever I think of the concept of suffering, my mind doesn't always go straight to a sort of hell. Suffering in itself represents freedom, not negativity. Who made the rule that darkness is the opposite of light? Darkness can exist in the absence of light. When searching for light, we oftentimes forget that it is us who is carrying the torch and using it to search for ourself. Does it matter how we receive the light or even how the message of light is delivered? The important message here is we have formed a connection that is not up nor down. The light and darkness are a constant movement. It crawls throughout our being like a machine, constantly on repeat. Embracing or denying desire, will, or even a lustrous journey is in fact all parts of the journey toward the path of esoteric lessons. Darkness is light. Keep clawing through the mud to attain its rewards. Introduction. Contained in these pages is what I believe to be an easy-to-read bulk of information that we are constantly distracted from. We can find benefits in our everyday lives by having these hidden sections of knowledge. I find that scientific papers are cold and too complex for an average reader, and metaphysical matters come off as delusional despite making up the entire world around us. After all, we should consider spiritual matters as just science that has not been obtained yet. There are alchemical manuscripts with strange symbols and mysterious origins that point in the direction of what this codex offers. But again, the hidden and cloaked format of these priceless papers often comes off as too cryptic for any reader who is adept in the craft of transmutation. In this age, we are bombarded with a myriad of reasonless noises that take our attention away from what is achievable by the human mind. The sun comes up in the morning and goes back down at night, and somehow, we have found a way to make that as complicated as possible. This is no accident. For if we were to be silent enough to listen and explore the core realities that exist formless within us and all things, the power shift on this planet would loosen the entire monetary hierarchy that is at play. We are born into a world of suffering, in both a limited physical form that is the body and the way that we have complicated the entire process of life and death to all fuck. We violently scrape to get to the next stage or better place in our life and then just die anyway. All the things we are trained and programmed to achieve and hope for are the very things that do not come with us into death. However, the things that we do take with us into death, we are expected to forget about. This cannot be good for the collective whole that is this species. As it turns out, we cannot just walk away from suffering. It will surely follow close behind and emerge in an uglier way as it will continue to grow within us the more it is ignored. We are forced to go through it, not around it or above it, as nice as that notion might sound to us while we are in it. How do we do this gracefully? Are we able to embrace the chaos we are born into so much that we can have stillness within it? Once we have found that peaceful stillness, can we transmute the surrounding noise into music and essentially make gold out of lead? 
This has been the primary goal of great men of all ages, from the alchemists to the sages, from the Freemasons to the Zen masters, and even from the scientists to the theologians and philosophers, despite how contradictory the methodology of each is to its counterpart. The end game is the same, and has been deliberately hidden from us for longer than we might think. Real liberation and primordial sovereignty might be much closer to our grasp than we have been led to believe. I am asking you to temporarily put down your concern for credit scores, taxes, social media, product advertising, local gossip, and whatever the news has demanded that you be concerned with this week. Most of our norms in society are none more than the pranking game of a grand trickster. Like the great Wizard of Oz, once we see behind the veil, the ones pulling the strings are, in fact, meager and subject to desire and pain, just like the rest of the world. Let's forget for a moment the fear and distractions that have been shoved up our asses since our birth. There are much greater mysteries in this world that require our attention. Book of Wonderful Suffering, the common ground of science and spirituality in analyzing the human experience in a subjective reality. Goal, to transcend this primal animal form and connect to a deeper and higher sentience to further the development of mankind on a spiritually intellectual level. Chapter 1 hard proof of spiritual matters is contradictory asking for solidified conscious forms we've slid our own throats with occam's razor and call it skepticism there is a vast reality that exists completely invisible to the untrained eye most of what reality is cannot be detected by us or the instruments that we have built to enhance our narrow perception of reality a relatable example today would be the accessibility of the internet through your phone the entire internet and every part of its vast content is around you and within you right now. You cannot hold out a finger without crossing through this invisible form. We do not have the biological tools to see all of this reality. And if we did, it would indeed be more information than we could grasp at once while keeping our sanity. So we have this tool called a phone that taps into this hidden dimension of space that we have created. And it is put in a two-dimensional, navigable, controllable format. What kind of magical sorcery must this be to any person born thousands, hundreds, or even 30 years ago, depending on when this is read? It is worth acknowledging that this notion might even be barbaric to the reader only a few years into the future of writing this, based on the incredible speed at which technology is changing. But the point still stands that we are calling upon science for these tools that would have been once considered some form of divine magic. The body and brain nervous system seems to act as a filter to raw reality. It puts a vast amount of absurd information into a form of consciousness that we can handle. We see and hear a small spectrum of vibrations and are limited to roughly five senses to make sense of the world around us in order to survive it. There are surely uncountable aspects of reality and dimension that we cannot experience with this current biology for the purpose of optimization of survival mode. Think of a clam that does not have eyes and ears, yet still experiences a form of reality that we cannot know of. If this creature was granted the everyday humdrum biological tools that we have to see and hear, it would surely consider this some sort of awakening or insanity. It would seem to the clam a sort of spiritual experience. The way that we perceive reality through our eyes and process the information in our brain is strikingly close to what is known as the sigil of Lucifer or bringer of light. Many men seem to take this filtered reality as the full spectrum of things simply because it is what he is experiencing. How truly nonsensible this idea must be, especially considering what science and mathematics are showing us about the world that we cannot see, hear and feel. Modern studies have shown that linear time itself does not exist in raw form the way we have adapted to it. Even the idea of the solid matter seems to be an illusion that we have formed to be able to adapt to a sliver of reality and cling to life. The biggest example right now seems to be the idea of dark matter energy. This stuff that cannot even be called stuff is not called dark just because we can't see it, but because we have no idea what it is or its purpose. Same with black holes, gravity, atoms, electrons, light, and many, many other concepts that we will not be able to grasp in this form any more than an insect will be able to grasp this writing. Our normal assumptions from what we have been taught no longer serve us in this time of constant evolutionary transitioning. 
As hunter-gatherers, we did not have time to ponder mathematics and language. Agriculture lent us that relaxation, but we remained in survival mode. Mathematics and language gave us better living conditions in the form of homes, vehicles, and communication, but we are still in survival mode. We are at a point now where we can deliver the necessary accommodations for a thriving life to every soul on the planet. We also know that there is enough of everything to go around many times over, despite what we are told by those withholding the power. Imagine what would be next on our evolutionary horizon if no one had to worry about the basic stress of survival. I could go on for many pages about those withholding resources for excess of themselves. But that is another subject, and my guess is that anyone reading this is already aware of this problem. If we no longer need this survival mode of biology, then what would be the next stage? Can we move into a creative mode using this very same energy?